Alright, oh my gosh. Okay, what up guys? It's me, GamerGuyTV here, and welcome back to another episode of Slime Ranchers. Now, in the last episode, we unlocked whatever this area is. Hang on. If it's the ghetto, I'm going to be very amused. It's the grotto. That's what it is. So yeah, in the last episode, we unlocked the grotto. Now, what this means is that we can take our phosphor slimes and put them in this cage down here. Now, in terms of upgrades that we have on this cage, we have an auto feeder, but we don't have a plort collector. So before we actually transfer our slimes into this plort collector, we are going, not into the plort collector, into the coral, we are going to have to, let's see, how do I explain it? We are going to have to get that plort collector, because it sucks to have to go in and have to, and have to collect plorts. It sucks because you're sucking up the slimes and the plorts and you gotta control all of them. And da -da -da -da, you guys don't wanna hear about it. Um, trust me, I speak from experience. I've been playing this game for almost a year now. Um. Ooh, what does this cost? 17.95. Into the overgrowth. I'll have to play a bit more on my personal and get into that before we get into it. Um. But essentially, yeah. So I think the plan for today is essentially pretty much do what we've been doing. Um, and you know, we need around five hundred dollars not dollars. We need around five hundred coins to be able to We need about... Hang on! HANG ON! Sorry about that, guys. I had an unexpected hot chocolate delivery. Um, it's from the coffee shop down the street. Let that cool. Mm, it smells really good. Anyway, as I was saying, we need about 500 coins to actually transfer. Not transfer. Well, yes, transfer. To buy the Lort Collector. So that we can transfer our phosphor slimes into the grotto. And then we can go out and catch some of the cat slimes. I forget what they're called. They're these. These ones right here. Um, and they are worth more than almost anything. And they eat meat. Which is why we have a chicken farm here. And... I'm going to put another chicken farm in the grotto, so that we have double for that, because those things take a while to grow, which is why we're probably only going to have like two or three of these cat slimes. And they're probably called like meow slimes. Um, but yeah. So, guys, an update on my Android Studio stuff. So, for those of you who don't remember, about two or three weeks ago, 
I mentioned that I was getting into Android Studio. Now, what is Android Studio, you might ask? Well, it's sort of self-explanatory, but not really. You can't see it here, but I'm holding up an Android phone. Now, I've been an iPhone user ever since I've had a phone, and I'm not switching over to Android. But Apple, their programming language, can't exactly get to. Can't exactly get to it very easy. You have to, like, buy access to it. And it is very bizarre. It's called Swift. Now, Android is a lot more capable of doing stuff like letting people my age program apps. So, like, our FTC requires an Android phone because you can put more stuff on the Google Play Store, which is what Android phones use instead of, like, an App Store for us Apple people. Um, especially since this is a Google Pixel 1. Now, the nice thing about Android Studio is it uses Java, just like our FTC program. Now, for FTC, we've been using Block. That is a whole nother story as to why we're using Block. But... Essentially, if you know how to program in Java, you can program an app in Android Studio. Now, um, I don't know much about Android Studio, so it doesn't make sense for me to go through and do, like, a live streaming series for it. And for it specifically. Because, currently, I don't know how to make a function loop infinitely. What I'm trying to do is, for those who don't know, the FTC game this year, this season, is called Skystone. And the app I'm trying to make now is a scoring for that, because if you have a yes and no switch that says, is the platform in the triangle? Is it out of the triangle? You know, stuff like that. So that is an on-off switch, which is used in Boolean values of true or false. A Boolean is a true or false value. Then you have the amount of blocks placed. And blocks is, like, each block in Autonomous is worth two, or if it's a Sky Stone, it's worth ten. And in Driver Control, each block is worth one point. So, there's an integer value right there that you're working with. And this entire thing is an operation. Because for each of the blocks, you're doing like times one in an endgame with double or something like that. I don't think they actually are. But in driver control, how many blocks do you have? Two. Score equals blocks times ten. Stuff like that. And that's why I chose the specific application of an Android Studio app is because that touches base with three or four different kinds of um, values. And the great thing about that is, yes, it doesn't touch all of the values, but a thing like a double is an integer, but it allows you to use decimal things. And the great thing about something like a string, because you have to use strings, too. Like autonomous, and, um, stuff like that. And the best thing is... You also get to learn. I knew nothing about Android Studio, and there's not an Android Studio crash course online that I could find that was very good. I didn't want to just watch a ton of YouTube videos. Because YouTube videos are helpful sometimes. What I wanted to do was I wanted to... What is the best way to explain this? There is no good way to explain what I'm trying to explain. So, bear with me. Um, 
essentially there are so many different components, I thought I'd have to code every element. And they have an option for that, but they also have an editor, which is easier for people like me who don't know exactly how to code every single element of Android Studio. And the reason that that is so great is because you all of a sudden get people who don't know how to code necessarily, but can learn. And you're giving them this chance to actually do something, and what I have right now is not very impressive. It's literally an on-off switch with a non-updating text object. But I figured out how to update that text view from outside, I just haven't figured out how to make that function update constantly. Because I need it to update constantly. I need it to say, okay, I'm going to check every second, or every half second, or every tenth of a second, to see if the status on this switch has changed. And if it had, I'm going to go over to this other file that is within the same project and say, okay, here's what's in this file, here's what I need, here's what's in this file, I've told it to call this function that is in this file, oh, okay, the status of the switch has switched from false to true, what do I need to do? Oh, I need to update the point value from zero, from score to score plus ten. Oh, it went down to false again, that was in that it went down to false again. I need to do score minus 10. And I'm probably going to run into difficulties there, because the logic there doesn't make sense. You have to make sure it stays at zero until otherwise. So, it's a funny thing. There are so many elements to this, but the big thing is figuring out how to get a function to update. And part of my goal with this entire thing was to be able to have the knowledge of how to do this by the summer. Because yes, I'm going away multiple, multiple times in the summer, and yes, I'm going to a couple summer camps. And yes, I'm going to be busy, I'm going to have projects, I'm going to want to get together with my friends. I'm going to want to do all this. But in the end, there are still going to be those rainy days when I'm not camp, when I'm not on vacation, and you know, can't go outside to play. Most of the crispy practice we got canceled. Stuff like that. But I'm going to want to sit down and live stream, and this will be a good way to live stream. It's sort of like I have the Roblox Studio speed build series now where I'm passing my knowledge of how to do some of this stuff in Roblox Studio on to other people. It's sort of that type of thing where I know how to do this stuff and other people don't And other people can learn, but sometimes they might not want to learn by reading an article or taking a class, they might want to learn by watching someone else do it. And that's what I'm trying to give them access to in that. I want to be able to give them access to somebody else doing the thing that they want to do so that they can learn. And it's also fun for me to be able to share what I know, because I know that I know a lot. There's a lot of noise in that sense. And I know that I know a lot about this specific... Pro... not program. I know that I know a lot about this specific thing. I grew up with it. My dad works in that field. Um... Well, a lot of my grandparents have experience in that field. And that is one of the most important things, is if you grow up with it, you become an expert on it. So, might as well just pass that knowledge along to other people. And stuff like that. I know that sounded way too adultish for my age. I'm sorry. Um, but, you know, this summer I want to be able to do a live streaming series 
with Android Studio, and I want to be able to have a YouTube-specific app. Like, maybe we're trying to create a stat for... Um... Maybe we're trying to create an application that will give me the desired frames per second for a time lapse. Or maybe we're trying to create an application that'll do something with Slime Ranchers or The Witness or Hyper Light Drifter. Or just name one of our games and we could make it. Or we could also make a program that scores Ultimate Frisbee. Or Tennis. Not that you don't know how to score it. Or even Squash. There's already applications for that. <coughs> and it's not that these people don't know how to score it. It's that it's a real-life application. And from what I've heard from my grandfather, it's not exactly that hard to get... I'm gonna call it a license for lack of a better word. A license to the Google Play Store. So we can publish these things. And I've got this Google Pixel test phone. I don't know how long I'm gonna have it for, but my grandfather's old phone was a Google Pixel 1. It's the exact same color. So when this phone needs to go away, I can just back up onto that phone, and we've got our phone for testing. And I'm going to look into how I capture that phone for stuff like live streaming, where we need to be able to have stuff like the phone capture and an Android Studio capture. And I'm working on a introdu not an introductory, I'm working on a class for Google Drive and Microsoft Office and, you know, the iCloud equivalent of that. I'm working on scripts for those. Those are going to be in development very shortly. And very shortly after that, I will be running tests with Streamlabs OBS to test and make sure I can capture a desktop. I can capture my phone. I can capture, you know, all of these things and still have it work. And there are some things that I'm not going to touch base on, like the Google Drive for desktop. That is not important. If you're, I used it and it ate up so much space on my computer because it was storing all the files locally and in the cloud. It was storing some files in the cloud and some locally. And it just took up so much space on my computer. But I'm working on how do I do this course? I know I want to do it. How do I reasonably do it? Because it might seem something as simple as, oh, come up with a script, put the thing in Streamlabs, and record it. No, you have to come up with a plan first. You have to know how many episodes you want. You have to know your target audience. You have to know what you're going to do for each episode. And you have to know the key points to touch base on. You have to have an idea of how long you want each of these episodes to be. You want to have an idea on those things. You don't even want to have an idea on them. You want to know them. You want to be able to know how long each episode is going to be. What you want to do during each episode. What your target audi- target- I can't speak. Target audience is. If I'm aiming at seniors who don't exactly know how to use Google Drive, but want to use Google Drive, that is a totally different course, not course, but it's a totally different attitude and set of skills than if I'm aiming at kids that are just learning how to use a computer and want to start writing and are using it for school. It is a totally different thing to be able to say that then have something where you're going 
to just do something and hope somebody finds it interesting. And I've thought about doing that, and I've had this idea of doing a drive course for on YouTube since, like, June of 2019. And it just hasn't worked out in a way that I can do it reliably and safely yet. Not safely, I don't know what I'm saying. It hasn't worked out, I don't- I haven't had the time. You know, I haven't had the time, I've been reluctant to write the scripts. Stuff like that. And it seems like such an easy thing to say, Oh, just write the script, I'll take that one. Well, it- it's different when you have a couple tests a week at the hardcore times of school. And you've got robotics, you've got squash, you've got multiple things going on, and they all boil down to one week, where it all happens. And stuff like that, and you're helping mentor another robotics team, and stuff like that, it just all comes together at one point, and that's why things like Winter Break is so nice. Because robotics is through school on every team. My team, the younger team, the older team, it's all through our school. Um, and because of that, it's a lot harder sometimes to... Not harder. It's a lot nicer when breaks happen. Because like Thanksgiving break, we still had practices our normal time because we had so much work to do for the competition. Winter break, we had just finished the competition. We weren't about to go off and give another... We weren't about to continue working over winter break because we needed a couple week break. And it was just so nice over winter break. I mean, I go back to school tomorrow. Public schools in my state went back on, like, Thursday, on, like, January 2nd. So we get an extra four days, which gives us a 16 and a half day break. Which went by way too quick. Seems like it was just yesterday school let out. Not tomorrow school goes back. But, and things like the Rock Shop concert and stuff like that, they all... And the school dance. I'm definitely gonna go to that. Um, it's on Valentine's Day, and I'm looking forward to going and just having fun. A lot of my goal the past couple years was to slow dance with the person I liked, and that's still one of my goals at the dance. But at the last dance, A, I was tired from a long week. And B, I was too motivated by that goal that I wasn't throwing myself out there. I was off to the sides a lot of the time because I didn't know the dances. And the reality there is just say the heck with it. Just have fun. You know? If you don't know the dance and people make fun of you, they make fun of you. You can't control other people. So... I mean, you know, and that's a Friday night, so I don't get a video up here. And then, I don't know what I got going on next Sunday. But, stuff like that, and it just... This time of year is a different kind of busy than other times of year. You know, fall is busy, because I have squash league and rest of Robotics is just starting up, and I'm involved in all this different FLL stuff with my dad, and um, while it is fun, it is, and there's farm festivals, pumpkin picking, Halloween, you know, days off of school, stuff like that. Now yes, while we do have a day off, a day or two off, of school. Oh my god. 
trash. We do have a lot of days off of school before spring break. I mean, we have MLK Day. We have... We'll probably have a couple snow days here and there. Right now, where I am, it's not very warm, and they're projecting, like, early to mid-January. It's not very cold. And they're projecting early to mid-January a big, big blizzard. Um, it would be nice to have a couple days off of school. In fourth grade, we got a week off of school. For snow. So, it would be incredibly nice to have that happen again. And honestly, I don't know what I would do if it happened again. You know? I mean, being off of school is a ton of fun, but at the same time, you know, start to miss your friends. I mean, I've gotten to hang out with mine over break, and I'm very happy with that. But, yeah. Anyway, guys, this video is long enough. So in the next video, we need an air net for those guys. And we need to get some cat slimes. So, anyway, guys, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see all of you in the next video. Bye!